We're in the Gemara here on Dav Chavav on the two lines from the top of the Yamad. This is a continuation of the sugya of Aisig be mitzvah, patam and mitzvah. An individual that's doing one mitzvah is exempt of doing another. Tanya Amar Av Chananya Ben Akavya, Kaisvei Sfarim Tfilin or Mezuzas. A cipher that's writing Sifri Teira or Tfilin or Mezuzas, Hain, they themselves, Tagarayan, merchants that are selling it for them, the Tagre Tagarayan, and other merchants that buy it from these merchants to sell it as well, the Chol Oiskim B'Melecha Shemaim, and all the others that are involved in this Melecha Shemaim of these Sifri Teira and Tfilin. And the Gemara says, who does this refer to? It's, it's coming to be marba something else. La suye moichre tcheles. People that sell the tcheles that's needed for tefillin. Uh, sorry, for the tzitzis that is. Pturin me kriyashma. The potter from the mitzvah of kriyashma. Umenat tefillin from the mitzvah of davening. Umenat tefillin and from the mitzvah of tefillin. Umikal mitzvah samuris b'teira. And the potter of all mitzvahs in the teira. Teisva says the only reason the Gemara pointed out these three is because in the Braise before when it spoke about another opinion which said that the Isaac bin Mitzvah is still chayv in another Mitzvah but these three Mitzvahs are unique because they demand Kavana so it mentions it here as well so the Yipater L'Kayim again we call Mitzvah Muriz Bateira L'Kayim the Yipater from being L'Kayim all Mitzvahs in the Teira Divrei Rabbi Yaisi Aglili this is the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi Aglili Shahoya Rabbi Yaisi Aglili Yaimeh if you're involved in one mitzvah, you're part of doing another mitzvah. Now the Gemara starts a new subject. Tan Rabbanon, we learned in Abraisa. Hoyl chayd rachim bayayim, people that are traveling on the way during the day. Pturin mena sukkah bayayim, a potter of being in the sukkah during the day. So Rashi here explains that the reason for this is, and we'll see it soon in the Gemara itself, because the mitzvah of sukkah, it says, Teishvu ke'ein taduru. You only have a mitzvah to sit in the sukkah in the same way that you are in your house. So just like all year, when a person lives in his house, so he'll go out on a way, he'll leave his house to go for a business trip or whatever else it is, and then he's not in his home, he's out in the field or on the road, and he sleeps outdoors, and he stays out, he eats outdoors. So the same thing also, when he get to the time of sukkah, he's not chayiv to be in the sukkah during the day when he's traveling and he's out on the road. However, at night, when the person goes back into an area where he's uh, stopping and he's staying over in a house, in a hotel, so in that time, you chayv in the sukkah by night. People that are traveling at night time, they're potter from the sukkah at night. And by day, when they're not traveling on the road and they're in a place where they could, they're in a house, so over here they can go into a sukkah, so they're chayv in the midst of sukkah. People that are traveling and they're traveling both day and night. They will be potter from the midst of sukkah both daytime and nighttime. Those that are traveling for the purpose of a mitzvah. So also, they're potter from the mitzvah both by day and by night. So Rashi here says the reason is because it's a tirde. It's going to be too much of a hassle for them to go and find the sukkah by night and it'll take them off their occupation of the mitzvah. But I mentioned before already on Daf Chav uh, Hey that uh, there's a machloikis of Rashi and Teisvis regarding this. Is it only in a case, Teisvis says, this is only in a case where they can't do both together. He can't be in the sukkah and continue on his way to the mitzvah. It's going to disturb. But if it's possible, then you do have to do both of them. Whereas from Rashi here, you see Rashi says that as long as it's even just a tirde and doyagim, that it's going to be something that is going to take you out of this preoccupation you have of the mitzvah, even if it's possible to do both, you're not obligated to be in the sukkah even at night when you're going for a mitzvah. So when they came for a Shabbos of Yom Tev Sukkis to the Reish Galusa, so Havagono Araksa the Sura, they slept out of the sukkah on the river bank of Sura. Omri, they said, Anan shluchi mitzvah, Anan, we are occupied with a mitzvah of puturin, and we're potter from the mitzvah of sukkah. Ton Rabbanon, we learned in the So in this previous b'raise we just learned here, the Gemara introduced a new concept, that the mitzvah of sukkah, you're only obligated to fulfill when it's teishvu ke'ein taduru. If you live in your house this way, that's how you're supposed to be in the sukkah. But if you're on, your, on the road, then you don't stay in your house when you go on the road, so you're not chayv in the mitzvah of sukkah then either. This is the source of the concept, as we'll see in the continuation of the Amud here, of mitzvah, potem, and sukkah. 
If someone has pain by being in the sukkah, so then you don't live in your house that way, so you're not obligated to be in the sukkah that way. So Tana Rabbanan we learned, Shaimrei Ha'ir, people that are the guards of a city. So they go out of their house and they walk around the city at night to protect the people in the city. Bayayim peturim in So the, again, the shayim reir bayayim, the ones that uh, guard the, the city by day. So they're peturim in asukeh bayayim. They're exempt from the mitzvah by day because they're busy walking around. So just like all year, they go out of their house during the day. So so too now during sukkahs, they don't have to be in a sukkah. V'chayavim balayla, but by night they go back home, so they have to be in a sukkah. Shemriyeh Balayla, those guards of the city at night time, Peturim and Asukah Balayla are potter from the mitzvah of Sukkah at night. Vachayavim Bayayim in daytime when they go back home, the Chayav in the mitzvah of Sukkah. Shemriyeh Ha'ir, Bein Bayayim, Bein Balayla, those guards that uh, are guards daytime and nighttime. Peturim and Asukah, Bein Bayayim, or Bein Balayla are potter from the mitzvah of Sukkah daytime and nighttime. Shemriyeh Ganezu Pardesim, people that are guards in, in gardens or in orchards. So they are guards there for, for, their, for their fields, daytime and nighttime. So they're potter from the mitzvah, both daytime and nighttime. What's, why, why can't they? They're not walking around. People that are guarding a city, they walk around, around the city. So they're not in one location. So they're not even indoors at all. But these are people that are in one place by their field. So the lev the sukkah hasam. Let them build a sukkah there by their field. And they'll sit in the sukkah and they'll protect their field while they're sitting in the sukkah. So Abaya Abaya says, Teishvu ke'ein taduru. That the reason they're potter is because of Teishvu ke'ein taduru. That the Teir is mechaev, the mitzvah of sukkah, to be in it the way you are in your house. The mitzvah is in your house, you have a table, chair, bed, and every, all the other kalim you have in your house. And that's the way you sit in the sukkah. So if you hear this person that's outdoors and he's in, he's, he's in this little hut that's in the field and he's watching his uh, fruits and his vegetables, whatever he has, there's no place to live there properly with all of his furniture or whatever he needs in the sukkah similar to his house. So since you can't fulfill it like Teshri Kain Tadudu, there's no mitzvah here. The Lashon Rashi here brings, this is a Lashon that al Rebbe actually quotes in Shulchan Aruch, Teshvu Ke'ein Taduru. So Rashi says, His kikasai teire lahaniach dirasai velada kam besukim, yitaisav, kleitashmisha, yimatsaisav. This is the very mitzvah. How do we define the mitzvah of sukkah? It's not just about being in the sukkah, eating in the sukkah, it's to live in the sukkah. To live in the sukkah like you live in your house with everything that you have in your house. So therefore, there's no mitzvah to do this when you're guarding a field and you can't bring everything there. Rav Omar, Rav gives a different reason. Pirtze kaira leganov. A breach summons a thief. It's an expression, meaning over here, if this person is going to sit in a sukkah, a sukkah has to have three walls, and he's surrounded, and he can't properly have the view of his garden to protect everything. So a ganav notices this, and he'll have a place that'll be able to come in, and the person, won't, uh, he, well, he won't be noticed. So therefore, you can't, we're not, we're not obligating him to be in a place where he's going to have to lose his money, lose, allow a ganav to come inside. My benayun, what's the difference between Abaya's answer and Rav's uh, answer, Rav's interpretation. Kibinayu, the difference is the komante karya de peri. If he's not guarding an entire area, a big field, it's just one pile of fruits, and he could do that even sitting in a sukkah, and it has an opening of one wall, and he could see the entire pile of fruits. So then he can sit in the sukkah, and it doesn't, he can do both at the same time, according to Rav. According to Abaya, though, the issue is Teshu Kain Taduru. So in this place outside, he can't bring, he that can't be there, live there like he does in his house, so therefore you're not mechuyiv to do the mitzvah here, even in a case where you could guard your fruits. Chaylin or Mishamshayin. In the Mishnah it said that people that are sick and the people serving them are potter from the sukkah. Tan Rabbanah we learned in Abraisa, Chayle Shamru, the sick person that is potter from the sukkah that it said in the Mishnah. Loy Chayle Sheyesh Beisakana. We're not talking about a person that's critically ill, that uh, is in a danger. So him, it's neat. obviously he's not obligated to do the mitzvah. Even a chayla that's not in danger. Even if he has pain in his eyes, and in a case where his eyes are not in danger. He has a headache. He's still potter from the mitzvah of sukkah. Um, Rav Shem Shem Gamliel said, One time, I was in the city of Kesari, and I had a pain in my eyes. Vihitir Rabbi Yaisi Biribi, Rabbi Yaisi the Great One, which Rashi says is Rabbi Yaisi Chalaf Ben Chalafta. He gave me a heter lishon to sleep. Ani or Mishamshi, me and my servants, chutz outside the sukkah. 
Rav Shara le Ravacha Bardala, Ravara he gave a hetta to Ravacha Bardala le Migna to sleep, be kilsa, be sukkah, inside a kilo, which is this little canopy that's over a bed inside a sukkah. We had this before. And as Rashi says, we're talking over here about a kilo that is something that is a. Is a um, oil for itself because we're talking here even though it has a proper roof over it which is a tefach and it has a height of ten tefachim for itself so it's a proper oil for itself so when you're in there you're not inside the sukkah so Rav allowed them to be in that, inside this, in that in this kila not in the sukkah mishum biki because of these uh, flies or mosquitoes maybe that were biting him Rav shari leila rabacha bara ada lemigne bar metalalta so he allowed Rav acha bara ada to sleep outside of the sukkah because of the foul odor of a floor. There was some kind of a white floor that they put there in that area and it created a bad uh, smell and he allowed him to sleep outside the sukkah. Rave le taimei, Rave that gave this hetter follows his opinion. Dama Rave. So Rave said, and here's the klal, mitztayer potem in a sukkah. If you have pain being in the sukkah, you potter from the mitzvah of sukkah. And this is the reason for the other cases that are said over here, Chosh Bereshe, all these, this is a mitztai, so he's potter from the sukkah. Frech the Gemara, but v'ho anan tanan, in the Mishnah we learn, Chaylen u misham shem pturim in a People that are sick, and the people that serve them, they are potter from the sukkah. So from this it seems, not every mitztai is potter from the sukkah. Chaylen in, a person that's sick is potter from the sukkah. Mitztai loy. A person that just has a pain being in the sukkah is it's discomfort. Maybe he has to overcome that and still stay in the sukkah. Amri, so the Gemara answers, no. Chayla hu umisham shav pturin. In the Mishnah, when it said that a chayla is potter, it's not excluding a mitztair. Over there, the chiddush of a chayla is he and the people serving him are going to be potter. Mitztair, a person that has pain being in the sukkah, hu potter, so only he's going to be potter, but misham shav loy. He doesn't need anybody else to serve him, so the other people, there's no mishamshim that are going to be potter from the sukkah. So the, the chayla, the reason why the mishamshim are potter, so the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch says, because they are being Isaac be mitzvah. If they're attending to a sick person, they're doing a mitzvah, and Isaac be mitzvah, potter in a mitzvah. That's the reason why the mishamshim are potter from the sukkah. The next thing it said of the Mishnah was You can eat food temporarily, a snack outside the sukkah. How much food is considered to be just a snack? Rav Yosef says The amount of the size of two or three eggs. Amalayabayas, Abay asks Rav Yosef, how could it be? But was Zimnin Sagin, many times, Sagi Lele Inish Bahachi, it's enough for a person to eat this amount. Vahavale Sudus Kva. And this is a very established meal that he's eating and it fills him. Alama Abayas, so therefore Abayas says, Kiditoim Barbera Vaayala Kala. It's like the yeshiva students before they entered into the shear, into the drasha, and they were concerned that it's going to last very long, so they wanted to quickly grab something before to eat, then they eat something quickly. That's the shear that's considered to be a snack that you don't have to eat inside the sukkah. How much is this? So Taisus over here says, the hainu kebeitza. It's one beya, a person swallows one egg. The, the, the throat of a person can swallow one egg. So he swallows one egg, that's uh, kebeitza is considered to be uh, achilas are. More than that is an achilas kva. Ton rabbanon, oichlin, achilas are, chutz sukkah. You can eat a snack temporarily outside the sukkah. But to sleep outside the sukkah, a nap, that you're not allowed. My time, what's the difference? Ravashi Ravashi says, Because we're concerned, a person going to sleep, he may fall into a deep sleep and sleep longer. Abai asks, if that's the reason, This is what it says in the Braise. You're allowed to sleep, a temporary a nap in Tefillin. But you're not allowed to sleep, uh, full sleep in, uh, in your tefillin. And the reason is, as Rashi says, you may come to pass gas while you're sleeping in the tefillin and it's a bazayin, you're embarrassing the tefillin. But why aren't we concerned that the person may fall into a deep sleep, like we say regarding sukkah? So it's interesting, the Shagasaya points out the mitzvah of sukkah is a mitzvah in Atayra. The, the, the problem of sleeping in tefillin is just an issue of midrabanon that it's shalo yafiach ben. So how is the Gemara comparing the two? Maybe by the sukkah, where it's a mitzvah and a to sleep in the sukkah. There Chachamim made the gzeira. 
So the Shagasai answers, because a person passing gas wearing tefillin is a bizarre for the mitzvah, the Gemara feels that it could compare this issue of embarrassing a mitzvah to a mitzvah menatayra. That's why it asks the question. So Omar Rav Yasef Breder Rav Eloi B'Meiser Shinasei La'acherim that the reason why it's not an issue to sleep in the tefillin of Shinas Arai is because there's others that, are, that he's appointing to take responsibility that he shouldn't fall asleep. That's the only case when you're allowed to sleep in tefillin of Shinas Arai. Maskef Lord of Mesharshi, Rav Mesharshi asks on this answer, how does that help? Arveich, Arvat Sarech, your guarantor that you won't fall asleep requires another guarantor that he shouldn't fall asleep. You can't rely on that. Hello, Rabbi Baba Khan, Rabbi Yechinen. No, he himself is doing something that he won't fall asleep deeply. Over there when it says that you can sleep in your tefillin temporarily is because he places his head between his knees in such a position that he's not going to fall asleep in a long, in a long sleep. That's why you're allowed to sleep that way in tefillin. Rav gives a different answer. When it comes to sleep, there's no such a thing of a temporary sleep or a long sleep. Not this, he's, he's saying this regarding sukkah. Sukkah, the mitzvah is that you must sleep in the sukkah. Now, there's no so when sleep, sometimes a person from a very, very short nap can get uh, the rest he needs, and sometimes he needs a, long, a longer sleep to get the rest he needs. So therefore, regarding the mitzvah of sleeping in the sukkah, there's no shear, there's no difference, and therefore you have to, you have to always uh, sleep inside the sukkah. That's, um, we're, 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 that's the reason why it's not like food. By food, it, it is a full meal satisfies you, and a snack doesn't. But by sleep, it's not that way. Sometimes a short sleep fully satisfies you. So therefore, you always have to sleep in the sukkah. Whereas regarding tefillin, where the concern is shama yafiach behen, we're not concerned that that will happen if this is just a nap. Whereas if a person sleeps a long sleep, we're concerned that will happen. Therefore, you're not allowed to sleep in the tefillin that way. And the Gemara brings a few different braises regarding tefillin. Tani Chode, in one braise it says, Yoshan Adem et Tefillin Shina Sarai. You're allowed to sleep in your tefillin temporarily, a nap, Avoloi Shina Skva. Not a longer sleep. Tani Edoch, in another braise it says, Ben Kva, Ben Arai. Either way, you're allowed to sleep in the tefillin. Tani Edoch, in a third braise it says, Loi Kva, Veloi Arai. You're not allowed to sleep in tefillin, whether it's a long, long sleep or a nap, it's not allowed. So what are these three braises speaking about? Like Ashia, there's no contradiction here. It's different scenarios. Oh, the Nakatlubiya day. When it says he's not allowed to sleep in his tefillin at all, not a long sleep, not a nap, it's because he's actually holding his tefillin in his hands. So we're concerned that the tefillin will fall out of his hands if he just falls asleep, even a, even a nap. Oh, the Manchi Bereshe. Then there's the case where the person is wearing the tefillin. So if he's wearing the tefillin, so as we said before, the distinction that he's not he's allowed to take a nap, we're not concerned that it'll pass gas, but he's not allowed to sleep a long sleep because we are concerned for that. And ha the potis sudri ilave, and the braisa that says that he can sleep in the, even a longer sleep is when he took off the tefillin and he wrapped it in a in a sudr, in a handkerchief, and he's sleeping beside his tefillin. So he's not sleeping with the tefillin on it, but he's sleeping right near his tefillin. He has nowhere else to put his tefillin, so he's allowed to sleep then. The Kamo Shinasare. Now the Gemara asks, when we keep on saying a nap, a Shinasare, what is the length of time that is considered to be a temporary sleep? Tani Rami Bayecheskel, Kidei Hiloch Mea Ama, the length of time it takes to go a hundred Amas. Tani Rami Hachi, this was said in Abraisa as well, Hayoshon Bitfilin, a person that sleeps in Tfilin, Veroye Keri, and he sees a seminal emission. Oiches Beretsua, so he grabs on to the straps of the tefillin in order to take it off. But ve'ena oiches bektzitze, he shouldn't hold on to the box, on to the bottom of the tefillin themselves, if he saw a carry. Devrei Rabbi Yaakov, that's Rabbi Yaakov's opinion. Chachamim oimrim, chachamim say, Yoshon, Adam betfillin, shina sarai, a person is allowed to sleep in the tefillin, a nap, avoloi shina skva, but not a longer sleep. And the Kama Shina Sarai, what's considered to be just a nap? The length it takes to go, a hundred Amas. So you see, it says this shear in the Braisa. Amar Rav, Rav said, So we're speaking about sleep and taking a nap. So the Gemara brings that Rav said, a person shouldn't take a nap by day. Longer than the time that a, that a, that a horse sleeps. The Kama Shina Sasos. What's the length of a time that a horse sleeps? Shitten nishmi, 60 breaths. Rashi says you shouldn't sleep during the day because of bitl teira. 
The day is the time that a person is supposed to be learning, not taking, uh, not going to sleep. There's uh, many different shit that's been to how long this uh, shit in Ishmael, the, the horse, how long he sleeps. Anywhere between three hours or three minutes and everything in between. So there's, there's different shit that's about this. It's brought in Shulchan Aruch, this halacha. Omer Abaye, Abaye said, She no say demar. The sleep of the master. He's talking about the sleep during the day and he's referring to his Rebbe, which is Rabbe. Kederav is the same long as his Rebbe, which was Rav. Uderav and Rav during the day, if he took a nap, how long was it also? Kederabi, as long as his teacher, which was Rebbe. Uderabi, Kedavit. And the length of how long Rebbe slept during the day was like by David HaMelech. Uderavid, Kedisusya. And David only slept as long as a horse sleeps. The susya shitnishmi, and the length of the sleep of a horse is sixty breaths. Abaya havenayim. Abaya was sleeping during the day. He would go to sleep by day. Kedemayel mipompedisi lebei kuvi. As long as it takes to go from pompedisi, pompedisi that is to bei kuvi. So karei le Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef said about him and then said to him, Ad masai otzel. Until when are you lazy? Tishkav to sleep. Masai toka mishinoscha. When will you get up? From your sleep, a pasuk in Mishlei, so he, he felt that he was sleeping too long. Person that's going into bed during the day to sleep, so he's wearing his tefillin. I mean, at those times it was customary to wear the tefillin during the whole day, so he's going into bed during the day. If he wants, he removes the tefillin. And if he wants, he can wear the tefillin. And the reason is, as Rashi says, because he's not going to sleep a shinas kva during the day. You're not supposed to sleep for too long. So he won't sleep for too long. And also, his wife is not there with him. There's no marital relations during the day. So we're not concerned about that. Balaylo, however, you go to sleep at night, chaylitz, you have to remove your tefillin, vein maniach, and you don't uh, put it on. Divrei Rabnosen. Rabbi Yaisi, I am Rabbi Yaisi, says, Hayyuladim, the younger, the, the bachrim, the younger people, lo'aylam chaylitzen. Even they go into bed during the day, they should take off the tefillin. Veinan, manichen, they shouldn't leave it on. Mipnei shiregilim betumah, because it's more common by them that they should have a tumah, they should see tumah, and therefore they shouldn't be wearing tefillin when they go into bed. Frek de gemare, leime, kesava rab yoisi, balkeri, oser, la niach tefillin. Should we say that rab yoisi holds that a balkeri is not allowed to put on tefillin? So the Mepharshim ask on this, how do we see that Rabbi Yaisi holds this? All Rabbi Yaisi said was that he's concerned that while you're wearing the tefillin, you'll see Tumah. But not that a Balkari that saw Tumah before and didn't go to the mikveh yet is not allowed to put on tefillin. So the Taisa Sarash says, if Rabbi Yaisi wouldn't hold that a Balkari is not allowed to wear tefillin, he wouldn't be chayshish for this chashash. He wouldn't have this concern that maybe he'll be seeing Kari while he's wearing the tefillin. Because he held that a Balkari is bachlal not allowed to put on tefillin, so therefore he was also geyser that you shouldn't wear tefillin when you go into bed because you might become a Balkari. But there's another question on this Gemara. The Gemara asks the question, should we say that Rabbi Yaisi holds that a Balkari is not allowed to put on tefillin? What's the question? Yes, maybe that's what Rabbi Yaisi holds. We know there's different things, that there's a whole sugi in brachas about exeira of tefillas ezra, that uh, a Balkari shouldn't daven and so on, say certain brachas. So why, uh, why is it such a big pellet to the Gemara? So there's a letter from the Rebbe, and in it, amongst other things, the Rebbe says pshat in this Gemara that the gzeda of a Balkari was specifically benigeya to dibur, not to speak divrei teire, not to daven, but not benigeya to the action of a mitzvah. And the reason is, the Rebbe says, because according to Kabbalah, according to Sefi Yitzira and other places, the bris haloshen, the, person, the way a person uses his mouth and the words he says, is connected to the bris mila, to, to the, to the kari. And therefore, when a person is a Balkari, he can't say Divrei Teire. Those two things are connected to one another. But a Maisa a Mitzvah, it was Pasha to the Gemara that a Balkari could still fulfill a Mitzvah. So the Gemara says, the Gemara answers, no, the issue is not the Keri. We're talking about younger people that are married and they have their wives with them, Askinon. That's what we're speaking about. And the issue is, Shema Yevoyu Lidei Hergel Dovor. Maybe they'll, uh, they'll um, get into the habit of wearing the tefillin even while they're with their wives and then they're embarrassing the tefillin. Toner we learned in Abraise, Shochach, Vishimish Mitosibit Tfilin. A person forgot and he has marital relations while he's wearing Tfilin. Eina Oiches, 
you shouldn't touch his tefillin. You shouldn't grab onto the tefillin, not in the straps, not in the tefillin, the box itself. Until he washes his hands, and then he can take off the tefillin. The hands are occupied and may have touched in, uh, in not sneezed places and became tome, so therefore you should not touch at all the tefillin with your hands.